Welcome to today's broadcast. We will be reading together from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 5, verse number 1 to verse number 4. 1 Samuel, chapter 5, verse number 1 to verse number 4. After the Philistines had captured the ark of God, they took it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Then they carried the ark into Dagon's temple and set it beside Dagon. When the people of Ashdod rose up early in the morning the next day, they saw Dagon fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. They took Dagon and put him back in his place. But the following morning there, when they rose, there was Dagon fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. His head and hands had been broken off and were lying on the threshold. Threshold, Only his body remained. Um, we see uh, in this passage, uh, the Philistines had uh, raided or fought against the Israelites and they had taken away the Ark of the Covenant. I want you to remember the Ark of the Covenant or the Ark of the Lord as, as it's called here is what carried the presence of the Lord. That is where or oh, that is what signified the presence of the Almighty God. Now this is a place where Moses after coming down from a uh, uh, from, from Mount Sinai had uh, put the two tablets uh, that contained the Ten Commandments. This was very significant. Wherever the Israelites went, if they, uh, uh, when they went to conquer the, 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 the land of Canaan or when they, they entered the land of Canaan, the Ark of the Covenant will go ahead of them, signifying the Lord, the presence of the Lord going ahead of, of them. Now, uh, you see the Ark of the Covenant, when they were in the wilderness, it would be put in the tabernacle, the tent of meetings. And then they would, be, they would go to worship God there because that's where the presence of God was. And then it was moved when King Solomon built the temple. The Ark of the Covenant was moved into the temple and then it was put uh, in the Holy of Holies. That is, the only, that is the place where only the chief priest would go once a year. Or, or one time, and even when he went there, he would, a, cha a chain would be tied on his, on his legs because uh, if he had sinned, then he would go there and, and fall in the presence of the Lord and die. And then people would pull him up. The Ark of the Covenant is signified the presence of God. So uh, we see the Philistines not knowing, not understanding what this was. They took it, you know, like any other trophy or uh, like any other um, item that they would take from the temple or from the Israelites or from the people that you conquer. They took it. And then they took it to their own land. When they brought it to Ashdod, the Bible says, they put it in the temple. See, they took it from the temple of the, of the Israelites, from their tabernacle or the temple. Uh, and then they brought it into the temple of Dagon, their God. Their idol, this was their idol, the God that they were, they were worshipping. And then they set it in the temple. They, they put it beside, beside the, the image of Dagon. And then what happens? The Bible says, when the people rose up in the morning, Dagon was fallen on his face. You know, falling on your face is a uh, is a sign of bowing is bowing is a sign of, of worship so Dagon was there bowing to the almighty god was the, the the ark of the covenant contained the presence of god that's where the presence of god was uh, during that time and there Dagon was bowing down and then the Philistines thought, you know, when they came, the people of Ashdod, they thought, oh, he may have fallen. You know, it's, something must have happened. So they set him up again to his place. But the following day, there he was again. And this time, not only had he fallen on his face, but his body parts, his hands and his, uh, his legs, they had broken off. Only his, uh, only his, uh, his head and his hands had been broken 
only his body remains. And that was serious. And if you continue to read uh, that chapter, you will see how God afflicted the people because of the Ark of the Covenant until they took it to a different place. And even wherever they took it, uh, God continued to affect those people until the Israelites had to come and, and get it back. I'm here to tell you that our Lord, our God, is a mighty God. He's a sovereign God. He's the almighty God. Is the living God and even idols, even uh, the devil himself, everything bows before him. Everything, even idols, even other gods that are worshipped by others, everything bows before him. And I'm not afraid to say that. Everything, even whatever you worship, if it's not him, it bows before him. Because he is the one living, almighty, everlasting, sovereign God. He is. And there is no one who is uh, above him. There is no one who is uh, more powerful. There is no one who is more sovereign. There is no one who, who, who is more mightier than him. He is the one almighty God. And as he says in the book of Exodus, I am whom I am. He is self-existent. He is our God. Everything worships him. And if you don't, then this is an opportunity to do so. Worship him. He is a good God. And he can bless you. And he can change and transform your life. Thank you for joining me. And God bless you. Amen.